ready to dive into the story of one of the most captivating and controversial leaders in Philippine history? Today, we're exploring the life and legacy of Rodrigo Roa Duterte, the 16th president of the Philippines, known for his fiery rhetoric and iron-fisted approach to change. From his rise as Davao City's bold mayor to his presidency that shook the nation, we're peeling back the layers on the real Duterte, his impact, his policies, and the controversies that have left a lasting mark on the country. Before we jump into the journey that defined Duterte's path to power, make sure to hit subscribe and tap the notification bell. Here on Philippine History, we reveal the untold stories and legacies that shaped our nation. Let's begin. One from Davao City to Malacanang, the early years and political rise. Rodrigo Duterte's story begins in Mason, Southern Leyte, where he was born on March 28, 1945. His father, Vicente Duterte, was a lawyer who served as a governor, and his mother, Soledad Roa Duterte, was a schoolteacher and a civic leader. Raised in a family that valued both public service and discipline, Duterte's early years were marked by a mix of academic struggles and streetwise survival. As a teenager, he often found himself in trouble at school but showed a knack for leadership early on. Duterte's journey into politics began when he moved to Davao City and eventually pursued a law degree at San Beda College in Manila. After obtaining his law degree, Duterte returned to Davao, initially working as a prosecutor. His first-hand encounters with crime and corruption in Davao sparked a desire for change, motivating him to run for public office. In 1988, he was elected mayor of Davao City, beginning a 22-year term, served over several periods that would redefine the city and pave his path to the presidency. During his tenure as mayor, Duterte transformed Davao from a city plagued by crime and unrest into one of the safest in the country. He introduced strict rules, some controversial, to address issues like crime, drugs, and cleanliness. His leadership style earned him the nickname, The Punisher, and he became known for his direct, often profane, approach and his willingness to bend rules for what he saw as the greater good. His popularity as a man of the people grew over the years, setting the stage for his presidential run in 2016. 2. The Road to the Presidency Duterte's Campaign and Promise of Change In 2016, Duterte launched his campaign for the Philippine presidency with a platform built on three main pillars, fighting crime and drugs, reducing corruption, and improving the country's infrastructure. His campaign was unconventional and sometimes shocking. Duterte was unapologetically himself, using colorful language and making bold promises. He tapped into the frustration of many Filipinos who felt that the country's leadership was out of touch and ineffective. His slogan, Change is Coming, resonated deeply with people who wanted to see immediate and decisive action. One of the most controversial promises Duterte made was his vow to eliminate the drug problem within six months of his presidency, declaring that he would do whatever it takes to rid the streets of drug dealers and criminals. This hardline stance, while concerning to some, earned him widespread support among voters who saw drugs as a significant threat to their communities. His campaign also emphasized addressing the needs of Mindanao, a region often overlooked by national policies, and pledged to address infrastructure and connectivity issues to support economic growth. Duterte's victory in the 2016 elections was decisive. He won by a large margin, and his supporters saw his win as a chance for the Philippines to break free from the past and enter a new era of governance that prioritized direct action over diplomacy. 3. War on Drugs The Most Controversial Policy of Duterte's Presidency Perhaps the most defining and divisive aspect of Duterte's presidency was his war on drugs. From the beginning, Duterte took a zero-tolerance approach to drugs, ordering police to go after not only major drug lords but also street-level dealers and users. The campaign led to a significant increase in drug-related arrests and operations, but it also raised serious human rights concerns due to reports of extrajudicial killings and abuses. Duterte's stance on drugs was both praised and condemned. On one hand, crime rates in certain areas reportedly decreased, and many citizens felt safer. However, the policy attracted widespread international criticism, with human rights organizations and some governments questioning the ethical and legal implications of the approach. 
Accusations of human rights violations and lack of due process led to investigations by international bodies, including the International Criminal Court ICC. Duterte's response to international criticism was unapologetic. Harvey Norman's furniture and bedding Black Friday comes early. He policies by arguing that the drug problem posed an existential threat to Philippine society, and he insisted that his methods were necessary to protect the nation. To his supporters, Duterte's willingness to stand up to global scrutiny and criticism was a testament to his dedication and strength as a leader. The war on drugs remains a deeply polarizing topic in the Philippines. While some credit Duterte's campaign with making communities safer, others point to the thousands of lives lost and argue that the approach created more problems than it solved. Duterte's legacy in this area is likely to remain a subject of debate for years to come. For infrastructure and the Build, Build, Build program. Another significant focus of Duterte's presidency was infrastructure development, primarily through the Build, 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 BBB program. Launched in 2017, this ambitious initiative aimed to transform the country's infrastructure by constructing new roads, bridges, airports, railways, and other critical facilities. The goal was to stimulate economic growth, improve connectivity across the archipelago, and create jobs, especially in rural areas. The BBB program has been praised for its vision and scale. Projects such as the Clark International Airport expansion, Metro Manila Subway, and Cebu Cordova Link Expressway have the potential to reshape transportation and reduce congestion in key urban areas. However, the program also faced significant challenges, including delays, funding issues, and questions about the environmental impact of some projects. Despite these hurdles, build, build, build symbolized Duterte's commitment to leaving a physical legacy that would benefit future generations. Duterte's approach to infrastructure was a break from the past, as he sought to make major improvements rather than incremental changes. By prioritizing infrastructure, Duterte aimed to position the Philippines as a regional economic player capable of attracting foreign investment and tourism. While some projects remain ongoing, the program's achievements stand as one of the more widely appreciated aspects of Duterte's presidency. 5. Foreign Policy – An Independent Approach Duterte's foreign policy was a major departure from that of his predecessors. Known for his independent foreign policy, Duterte sought to reduce the Philippines' reliance on traditional allies, particularly the United States, and instead foster closer ties with China and Russia. His approach to foreign policy was pragmatic, aimed at securing the country's economic interests and promoting a more balanced set of international relationships. Duterte's pivot toward China was particularly notable given the ongoing tensions in the South China Sea. Although the Philippines won a landmark ruling in 2016 at the Permanent Court of Arbitration affirming its rights in disputed waters, Duterte opted for a more diplomatic approach with China, seeking economic cooperation over confrontation. This decision received mixed reactions, with some praising his pragmatism and others viewing it as a compromise on Philippine sovereignty. In addition to China, Duterte made efforts to strengthen relationships with Russia and other non-traditional allies. He hoped to diversify the country's alliances and expand economic partnerships, particularly in sectors like energy and infrastructure. His approach marked a shift from the Philippines' historical reliance on the United States, and he openly criticized the U.S. on multiple occasions, especially regarding issues of human rights. Duterte's foreign policy was ambitious, but often contentious. Supporters argued that his independent stance allowed the Philippines to assert itself more confidently on the global stage, while critics warned that the country's strategic interests might be compromised. 6. Duterte's Legacy and the Impact on Philippine Society Rodrigo Duterte's presidency left a lasting impact on the Philippines, but his legacy is complex and multifaceted. His policies touched nearly every aspect of Philippine society, from crime and infrastructure to international relations. To his supporters, Duterte represented a much-needed change, a leader willing to confront the country's problems head-on. To his critics, he was a divisive figure whose policies, particularly the war on drugs, left a troubling mark on human rights and governance. In addition to his policy achievements and controversies, Duterte's presidency also reshaped the Philippine political landscape. 
His daughter, Sarah Duterte, emerged as a prominent political figure, and the Duterte family's influence in politics is likely to continue. His presidency also inspired a new wave of populist leaders who see his approach as a blueprint for appealing to a broad base of supporters. Ultimately, Duterte's legacy will be evaluated in the years to come as future generations consider both the positive and negative aspects of his leadership. His presidency brought about significant changes, but it also highlighted the ongoing challenges that the Philippines faces in areas like human rights, governance, and economic development. Rodrigo Duterte's time in office was anything but ordinary, and his presidency marked a pivotal period in Philippine history. From the controversial war on drugs to the ambitious build, build, build program, Duterte's legacy is a mixture of achievements, debates, and lingering questions. His impact on Philippine society is undeniable, and whether viewed as a hero or a polarizing leader, Duterte's legacy will continue to shape the nation's future. If you found this exploration of Rodrigo Duterte's presidency insightful, make sure to subscribe to Philippine History. Here, we dive deep into the stories, legacies, and events that have shaped the Philippines, past and present. Let us know in the comments what aspect of Duterte's presidency you found most intriguing, or suggest another historical figure you'd like us to cover next. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next episode.